Hi, my name is Rebecca Winters, and I'm the owner of Art in the Vine and Grapevine. We're a BYOB painting studio, and today I'm going to show you a couple of paintbrushes we use and the techniques that they're used for. Laid out in front of me, I have a couple of paintbrushes here. We're going to start with this little skinny paintbrush and a little cup of water. I like to use this because we need to water down the acrylic paint that we use to create the beginning sketch. Ideally, you would use the lightest color in your palette, but today I'm going to use black just so that you guys can see it. Now, I'm just going to put a couple little scoops of paint into the water. I probably have just a little couple of drops in here. It's just enough to make it the consistency of watercolor. You want it to be dark enough to see it, but not too dark. The reason why we do this at the beginning is so that when you're doing your painting, you're not going to see the sketch through the paint. By the way, for my palette, I use a paper plate, easy and expensive disposable. So if you're wanting to do this at home, I would highly recommend using a paper plate. Today I'm going to be using a canvas board. It's very inexpensive and easy to find. You can find some at Walmart, Michaels, or anywhere else. Um, but at my studio I use stretch canvas. Today I'm going to show you how to do a tree. You start at the bottom and you work your way up and you do several different lines. You always start at the bottom, get paint as you need it. You want to make sure that the lines are not going the same direction every time. You want to make sure that they're kind of wiggly. Um, and when you see the painting, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And the last thing I'm going to do for this painting is I'm going to do a, hor uh, a horizon line. That's a straight line across the back. It's approximately in the middle of the page. Okay, the next part of this is the background for the sky. You can make the sky pretty much any color that you want to. Today I'm going to use a little bit of pink, a lot of white, and a little bit of purple. This brush right here is one of my favorites. It's a really good brush. It's nice and easy and smooth, and it's a good brush for blending colors. A lot of places will tell you to use this brush when you're wanting to put on um, a heavy background color or something like that. I like to use this for mixing. When I put colors on the background, especially when it's a sky or something, I tend to put down white first if white's going to be involved because white doesn't blend as well as the other colors, so you need a lot of white. And what I mean by that is if I have a darker color, it's going to take just a tiny little drop. Like for this, I use the purple right on the corner right here. So if I was to put the purple down, the white would not really cover it. Whereas if I use the white first, the purple is going to blend nicely into the white. I'm also adding pink. When I do this part, if I cover up the tree, it's not that big of a deal because the sketch that we did at the very beginning is just going to be a reference for us later. Okay, you want to go all the way from the top of the painting down to the horizon line. And you want to make sure that you're painting from side to side. If you go up and down with your paintings, you're going to have some kind of weird streaks. Um, when you look at the sky, if, especially at night when there's a lot of colors in it, you'll notice that the sky is a little bit streaky from side to side. Um, it's caused by the atmosphere and the clouds. So having a streaky sky going side to side is okay, but having one going up and down doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to continue using my favorite brush because we're going to be doing the grass or the bottom of the canvas. Again, we have the horizon line in the middle, so we're going to work from that line down. If you can avoid the tree, do it. If you go over the lines a little bit, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to start with the darker color. On this, I'm going to have two different greens and a tan color. So I'm going to hold my paintbrush side to side this way so I can get a nice, sharp, crisp line. If I hold it this way, it's not going to work. So I go straight across the horizon line with the dark green only. And I'm going to add a little bit more dark green again. Just like the sky, you're going to go side to side when you're painting this. You're not going to go up and down. Okay, I'm going to start adding in the lighter color. I am not cleaning my paintbrush in between this. I'm just adding the second color. It's about halfway down that I add the, the lighter green. 
And then I'm going to blend it in with the dark to get a nice color change. The ground like the sky is so really it's a personal preference. If you want to do yellow on your ground or you want to do purple or pink, that is entirely up to you. But for what I'm showing you for this purpose, it's just going to be straight across and it's just going to be green. Sometimes I'll turn my canvas around just so that I can, because I tend to pull to the right. And so sometimes I'll turn my canvas around so that you guys can um, see me do that better and it's just easier for me. Okay, at the very bottom I'm going to work a little bit of tan into it. I think that tan was a little bit too much, so I'm going to add a little bit more dark green to that. When you're doing this, you do not want to put a lot of paint on the canvas because it takes forever to dry, one, but also you won't get the nice smooth blending that you want. One color will overpower the other colors. Okay, the next part of the painting we're going to do is the branches on the tree and the tree trunk itself. You can use one of these two paint brushes. Um, this one's a really good one. It's nice and flat. You can get some really good curves with this one. I really like the shape of this. It's got a curved edge, but I don't think that this one's quite big enough for what I'm doing today. I'm going to grab a little bit of black and some tan for this one. And again, it's like the, the white. You don't want to put too much of the darker color. You want an even mix. Maybe a little less black, a lot more tan. As I said before when we were sketching out, you're going to want to start at the bottom. You're going to end up with a really weird mark if you start in the middle. So make sure that you're starting at the bottom. And grab paint as you need it. Now, I typically start at the bottom and I go up and I do one curve this way and one curve this way. Now, it doesn't matter if the black is on the left or the right or the middle or whatever, as long as you're consistent. It's going to end up streaky and that's actually the look that you want. It'll look more like tree bark as if it's streaky. You can always go back in with a smaller brush to make some more details if that's what you're wanting. Or you can just leave it the way it is. Okay, remember they're tree branches, so they're not all going to be the same size, same thickness, same direction. Sometimes they're going to be uh, a little bit weird. You need to make sure that you branch off some of the branches from the other branches. And you also want to make sure that you're going straight up through the middle as well. I'm finding mine to be a little bit too dark, so I'm going to stop grabbing the black and I'm just going to grab strictly the tan. It's hard to cover up black, so be careful with that one. You can always add more tan to it and then black later. I'm just about finished with this. Just again, remember that you need to put some little branches coming off all the big branches and strange directions and make sure you wiggle right at the end.